What's up everybody and welcome back to my channel. Teen Mom 2 star Kaylin Lowry revealed on this week's episode of her Coffee Convos podcast that she found out after a doctor's visit, dermatologist visit I should specify, that she had precancerous cells under her breast. So when she shared the story, she said that, listen, I have been a regular tanner for several years now. I go to tanning beds and recently I started noticing when like I would go like, you know, every single day that I started developing freckles and then I started developing moles. And so what I did was I went to a dermatologist to get it checked out and it turned out that the moles that she was starting to grow were actually precancerous in fact. And so when she delivered her fourth son Creed, the doctors cartilized the mole and um, it left a scar. And so she thought everything was over and done with, but then three or four weeks later, it started to sprout again. And so she now has to get it actually cut out of her skin and stitched up. When it comes to skin cancer, although she does not have melanoma, when it comes to skin cancer, she says that there are a couple of instances of it on her mom's side of the family. She doesn't know about her father's side because she doesn't really have much um, of a relationship with them. But you know, she says that her mom and her grandfather both did have skin cancer. But for some reason, despite knowing this and despite knowing the dangers of tanning beds, she kept going to tanning beds her entire adult life is what she said on the podcast episode. And she actually said right up until Lux was born, which to me, I'm like, okay, she said right up until Lux was born, not until she found out that she was pregnant with him. So does that mean that this girl was going to tanning beds while she was pregnant? Is that like a thing? I looked online, I'm like, no, there's no way. This is a, a legal, normal thing that people do, but apparently some people do do it. Online, they're saying that there's no evidence, you know, that claims that this is harmful for the baby and there's nothing that claims that it's not harmful for the baby. So some people, like allegedly Kale, I guess, go ahead and get their bake on while they're baking a child. I don't know, you guys, this to me is just really, really strange because um, in my age range, I'm around the same age as Kale, 27. There was a really big campaign when I was in high school to stop girls from going to tanning beds because they were really popular at this time. I believe this was probably like what, 2009-ish or something like that, and, or 2008. And so like it was a really, really, really big campaign. Like they would come to our schools, we would have like, you know, uh, big assemblies about them in the auditorium, how dangerous they were, skin cancer, like all of this stuff was a huge thing. So for me, the fact that girls in this age range still go and do these things is a little bit shocking. You know, I know that Chelsea always looks a mess with her spray paint, spray tan or whatever, like always being off, like in the hands, the face, the nose, whatever. But at least it is leaps and bounds more healthy than sitting around under UV light, direct UV light, especially while pregnant, right? You know, I, I don't want to sound insensitive, but is being a little bit lighter, a little bit pale, truly the end of the world that this is something that you want to risk for yourself? I don't know. That's a question that each person has to ask for themselves, you know, but um, you know, nonetheless, I am quite shocked. Another thing that quite shocked me was that Kale said that she was doing this on a daily basis. That's why I'm asking. I'm like, really? You need to do this on a daily basis? Doesn't this, and like, isn't this the same chick who gets Botox? You know, like, it's kind of counterproductive to be doing something that ages you so quickly while also getting Botox because you care about preserving your youth, right? I, am I crazy? I don't know, you guys. The whole thing is just very odd. And um, lastly, she never really said that she was going to quit going to tanning bed. She just kind of shared the story and went on about the day. You know, it then kind of segued into other issues that she was having, other medical issues. Remember, last month she talked about very heavy bleeding. She hasn't yet seen her gynecologist about that, but it is something that she wants to. She's a little bit nervous about it though. Um, she had some kind of fungal issue with her toe. Um, and so the doctor clipped a little bit of something, something to like fix, I don't know, get rid of it. And this broad went ahead and got a pedicure at a public salon a couple of days after that like in water, in a tub, foot tub, that so many other people use when you just got a little piece of your toe or whatever fungus clipped. So now she could spread this fungus situation or like get infected due to an open wound or something. I don't know, like it was just so dumb, like obviously against doctor's orders. Like, is it really that hard to just paint your own nails at home? I've been doing shellac manicures for well over a year now. It is so much easier and um, more hygienic to just do it yourself in your own house, but I digress. Anyway, she claims that she took a pay cut this year. I, I don't know from what, because she is still shooting Teen Mom 2, still doing her podcast, the hair care is still selling, she's still 
still got her books, her Instagram sponsorships. So I really don't know what she's talking about in regards to a pay cut. She was never really doing many live events, if any, that I'm aware of. Um, and she mentioned that in regards to hiring a sleep consultant for her son, Creed, to help him kind of get into a sleeping schedule. Now, um, another little tidbit of information that she dropped was that Teen Mom 2 has not been filming for a couple of weeks now and won't be back for another 10 days. According to Kale, this is very unexpected, so she still doesn't actually know why they took that little bit of a hiatus. Um, I know that when it comes to the Teen Mom OG girls, someone in the cast or in the crew came down with the virus, they tested positive, so maybe it was something like that. She suspects that it could be due to a rise in cases in certain cities or states or something, I'm not sure. Um, and she also says that despite not shooting for another 10 days, they are expected to wrap up filming by March of this year. So this is a very accelerated schedule. I've never really heard of them filming for such a short amount of time. But of course, with everything going on, it is quite understandable. You know, it's a month and a half, which to me, I'm kind of like, girl, you're going to be making what, like 500, 600 maybe K for one month and a half of work. That is incredible. Don't come crying to me about how you're not getting royalties on Netflix. No reality stars get like you're working a month and a half to make 600 K. That's amazing. Um, she says it's going to be season 10 B and only 10 episodes long. We all know that Chelsea is departing from Teen Mom 2. I thought it was a surefire thing that Ashley Siren from Young and Pregnant would be taking over her place on Teen Mom 2. But Kiel said that she reached out to Ashley for comment and Ashley said that she couldn't confirm or deny it. And this episode was taped a couple of days ago, like on Monday or Tuesday. Um, so what is the truth there? Did is Ashley just not allowed to publicly acknowledge it? Because I could have sworn it was confirmed. I could have sworn, or maybe this is like, this girl's coat is so cute. It's one of those teddy bear coats. Um, I could have sworn that it was like a mandala effect kind of thing, I don't know. Um, but yeah, she's like, Ashley cannot confirm or deny. Kayla says that although she would be happy to see Ashley on the next season of the show, she thought it would have been one of the new 16 and pregnant girls. And she also said that she doesn't really see Ashley joining in season 10B because it's only gonna be about 10 episodes long. But you know, to the which I say, Mackenzie McKee joined Teen Mom OG with only like three or four episodes left. Like she came at the very, very end of the season. So I could totally see Ashley slowly being integrated into Teen Mom 2 for a quick little 10 episode test and then getting a full season after that. It wouldn't be the first time. Kale also acknowledges being a very controversial star of the show and not being very well liked either. And she says that she also actually kind of feels a little bit vindicated by people's changed opinions of her upon re-watching uh, seasons one and two of Teen Mom 2 on Netflix. By the way, I do recap those with my channel members. We're gonna be uh, discussing a couple more episodes, two more episodes today at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, just quick little plug there, hit the join button if you wanna join us for that. People who've been keeping up with me on the membership side about like the older episodes know that I've actually always been like Team Kale in the earlier seasons of the show. Like she has made her mistakes, but you see that Joe in particular was quite what I would consider to be an abusive boyfriend. So I get some of her behaviors uh, when it comes to him. Um, she also says that she would love for people to stop harping on the fact that they're approaching 30 on a show called Teen Mom because she feels as though the aftermath of teen parenthood does not end once you hit your 20s or whatever. Like it just goes on for life. But with that in mind, this show as it is right now does not show a real accurate proper depiction of the act math of teen pregnancy in my opinion because all these girls are rich doing nothing but being like influencers so you know if that's what you want to go on showing the aftermath of teen parenthood maybe go back to the original cast of 16 and pregnant from like the first couple of seasons and see where they are at at this age you know living more realistic lives or just follow girls for maybe i don't know two three seasons and keep changing them out so that the stories are still you know what i mean normal relatable, not this different celebrity kind of a world. And last but not least, in last week's podcast episode, Kale claimed very loudly and proudly and definitively that she would be the next person to quit Teen Mom 2. Now, now that Chelsea has um, announced her exit, but in true Kale fashion, she has done a complete about face here. In this week's episode, she claims that because, you know, she's showing so much of the aftermath of Teen Parenthood, she wants to ride the show out until the very end because there's still a lot of 
quote unquote story to tell. Whatever girl, what do you think about all of this? First of all, Kale allegedly going to tanning beds while pregnant um, all this time with her children and now being precancerous and not definitively saying that she's going to stop with the tanning beds. I'm also curious about, you know, you guys' thoughts on her talking about, um, you know, how teen parenthood kind of follows you forever and so she would like to go stay on the show for as long as she possibly can. Are they actually really showing the true implications of teen parenthood at this point, making like 700, like I wouldn't even say, let's say a million. With everything they've got going on, their influencer stuff, at least a million dollars a year. Make sure to let me know all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. And is oh, guys, and let's not even forget her getting a fungal infection, then going to get a pedicure at a public salon like a couple days later. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section down below. And as usual, we'll chat. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.